Joining us today is local family physician, Dr. Melanie Marr. Dr. Marr, thanks for taking the time today. And I want to just jump in by saying we recently received details from the province that the AstraZeneca vaccine would be available to those 60 to 64 in Muskoka from local care practitioners. So family doctors, nurse practitioners and the like. You're one of the doctors who will be administering the vaccine for your patients. So can you give me a bit more background on how this came together and how it will work? So what we know, uh, we were advised late last week that um, the Ministry of Health approached Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit uh, to participate in a pilot for delivering this AstraZeneca vaccine. So there's only a few regions that are doing this, and we are lucky enough to be one of them. Um, and so they've asked us to <clears throat> start doing this administration of the vaccine through our primary care avenues. Um, which is different than the current public health unit vaccination clinics, which are being run right now with the Moderna and Pfizer. So how this is going to work um, changes every day. So essentially, you know, we've been told we're going to get some supply, although the amount is um, unknown. Uh, we, were, we do know how much we're getting this week to hopefully start using next week. Um, and it is meant to be delivered, like I said, through the family physician offices, nurse practitioner offices, um, not yet through the pharmacies. They are in the planning stages for having that work, but there are no pharmacies locally who are going to be providing this yet. Um, hopefully that will happen this month, um, but that's not part of the initial rollout that's going to start next week. Um, so each office is able to pick up a small allotment of vaccination for their own offices um, as of Friday this week. Um, and each office has been advised to utilize that vac vaccine for their 60 to 64 year olds who are generally well uh, people at low risk for severe disease or mortality. Um, this is a vaccine that's been studied. Um, it didn't have a very good uh, or a very high population of people in it who are over 65 and that's why it's been uh, shown to be efficacious in those 65 and un or 64 and under, which is why we're we're using it for that population. Um, so each office is um, going to be contacting their own patients who are eligible for this. Um, it's in that age group, but also um, excluding the patients who are already eligible for the vaccine through phase one. So if they're on chronic home care, if they are over um, 80. Five, um, those ones we're going to be waiting for the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. Um, so each office is going to be calling their patients who are eligible. And like I said, we're going to have to ask our patients to be really patient because we're getting about 10% of what we need to vaccinate um, our 60 to 64 year olds. And that's just to start with. Hopefully over the next few weeks, we will get more and we'll be um, a little bit well versed um, in terms of how we're going to administer this. There's quite a bit of training involved that we need to um, get all the doctors and nurses involved in so that we can register these vaccinations on the Ontario wide system called COVAX. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is sort of madly working on getting registered in that system so that we can give these vaccines in the offices. So, Dr. Marr, how much is this adding to the workload for you, as I'm sure you're already quite busy with other duties as a family doctor? Yeah, I mean, I think the difficulty is, is the news comes fast and it changes frequently. And so to keep up with the many emails is a lot of work. Um, and there's a few of us who are more involved in um, doing the regional planning for Huntsville and Bracebridge. Um, so that's been quite a bit of work because it kind of, um, you know, you hear about the announcement on Friday and you want to activate that stuff come Monday. So it's quick turnaround with lots of information and lots of changes. Um, and it's really quite difficult to keep up with and to ensure that the community is educated as to what you're doing. So uh, that's probably the biggest challenge um, is, you know, just making sure that you're up to date. In terms of hours, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> Um, but, you know, our, our primary care practitioners are very dedicated and motivated to get these um, vaccines into the arms of our community. Um, so they've been working hard to follow all the steps they need to do to get registered to be able to give the vaccine. 
Dr. Mark, can you break down the numbers for me again? You mentioned your offices would be able to pick up these vaccines from the health unit. Is that daily, weekly, monthly? So we haven't been told exactly how much we're going to get um, and how often, but um, as it goes with the Moderna and Pfizer, we tend to find out on a weekly basis uh, if we're getting the supply that we are um, hoping to. So I haven't heard yet for the AstraZeneca. All I've been told is that the supply is expected to be ongoing and increasing. And this is a pilot, so the amount that's being distributed amongst Ontarians is, um, you know, pretty small in all regions, but particularly in our smaller community, um, you know, where all, our health unit also covers Barrie and Collingwood, and, you know, all these other regions that have a higher population. So, um, you know, hopefully over the next few weeks after we've had our feet wet, we'll get more supply and be able to give it more efficiently. And Dr. Mar, if you can tell me, you know, why do you think that Simcoe Muskoka was selected for this pilot project? Um... So I think two reasons, and Jeanine, you might comment too. I think our region is very lucky in that we were um, quick to get things going with the mass vaccination clinics. I think we were a little bit ahead of the game from other uh, health units um, in terms of, you know, just setting up the clinics. And that's what I was told at our regional meetings anyway. Um, and we have quite a few communities, uh, Collingwood and um, Kuching, which are really proactive. They're just... Um, They've just got everything organized in terms of their IT, um, which makes this process a lot smoother. Um, Collingwood traditionally has a very well-functioning family health team, which often gets approved for pilot things because they are so well-coordinated um, and so um, well-supported with their IT. So I, don't, I, I think it's probably both of those reasons, but we also have a fairly high um, incidence right now of COVID with the variant, so that's probably a, a factor as well. And anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Mar? I think people will be um, calling their primary care provider and saying, hey, how do I get this? Um, and is this, like you had said in your email, is this the same? Do I call public health? Because there's that number that was publicized for um, the mass vaccination clinic. So I think the public hopefully uh, will, will, they'll need to know that they will be called if they're eligible for their 64-year-old 60 AstraZeneca shot by their own primary care provider. Um, and it is not the same phone line that you use to book if you're eligible for Moderna or Pfizer. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, doctor, thank you very much for taking the time today. I do appreciate you providing us with some more insight into how this vaccine process will work with the local practitioners. And again, a reminder that your practitioner will reach out to you. If you're in this age category, please don't reach out to the health unit and don't call your doctor. If you are, if you are available, if you are able to get this vaccine, they will reach out to you.